absolutely in Virginia. Um, I know you've seen a decline, but when, when you go out there, I mean, what are you guys doing? What, bring me through. Okay, me through. so there's been a progression sort of in our research over the years. For a long time, we killed every snake that we got our hands on. Uh, and then we put some radio transmitters in some. And we did two different telemetry studies to follow fish, figuring out their migration and their habitat use. So that was valuable. We got some valuable information from that. And then a few years later, we entered into a cooperative tagging program with the Fish and Wildlife Service, Maryland DNR and DC Fisheries. So you've got three different game and fish agencies with a federal agency, four agencies coming together, working cooperatively, and we're tagging thousands of fish a year, putting them out there to gauge not only movement and growth, because we get growth increments from tag recaptures, but then we get this thing called exploitation. How many fish are getting caught by anglers? Right, so we have reward tags out there. It's so, so that right, yeah. this is the hat I'm wearing. Um, Sorry, and, I didn't mean to get and on so here that went on for several years. We got a lot of good information at that point, and and then that morphed into each agency, each of these four agencies taking a study creek, a tributary to the Potomac, and doing a population estimate. Because for, for a long time, when we're out there collecting data, we're using electrofishing, and when we're in a, a day of electrofishing, we're going to catch a certain number of snakeheads. 15, 20, 25, whatever. Yeah. That is based on the amount of effort we're shocking. So we have a relative abundance index or a metric. So we can say this creek had 15 snakeheads per hour. Last year it had 20. The creek south of that has 12 snakeheads an hour. Whatever, you, you know, you come up with these different scenarios. The bottom line is we need a metric to calculate abundance. Okay, so, but what does that mean? Snakeheads per hour of electrofishing. In the real world, how does that translate to real fish? Yeah. So the, 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 so the tagging study that we were originally doing, we were just tagging a bunch of fish and letting them go, that morphed into a multi-census multi recapture study where we were intensively sampling each of us our own little creek, like 10 times a year. So we're in Little Hunting Creek 10 or 12 times in a given year, tagging fish and then recapturing fish, tagging fish, recapturing all the time, and then that goes into a computer program and it gets spits out at the end of the year an adult uh, population estimate for the whole creek. So Little Hunting, as an example, has great snakehead habitat, mm -hmm. and the whole creek is good. So, so that gives us, we can have an absolute number, fish per acre. And we watch, this is the fourth year now, so we, obviously this year's not done yet, but we've had three years of completion, and we've watched that number sequentially decline every year. And, and that's important. You, you've literally watched it fall, yeah, yeah. which is surprising. Uh, I mean, given 10 years ago, that nobody would have guessed that would happen. No, everybody was fear that the numbers would keep going higher and higher and higher. In fact, what we saw was the numbers peaked in about 09 or 10, depending on what creek you were in, in the northern creeks, the area where they've been the longest. Yeah. The southern creeks, where they were three or four years lagged, okay, those numbers are, are still behind, but they are also stabilizing and even declining in some cases. So I think we've probably, in the creeks where they've been the longest, and this is the key, this is, this is the, the fix. I mean, if this is right or wrong is a big deal, and we don't know. Yeah. We won't know for another 10 years. But it seems like with the creeks where they've been the longest, we've already seen it top out. We've seen the worst case scenario. And, and, and is that that's nature taking its course, or that has a lot to do with bow fishermen? Both, both. Okay. There's an equilibrium concept with an invasion theory with a new species. New species comes in, spike, right? Then it kind of hits some kind of a plateau and you get a decline. It's, it's in the literature, it's very well documented. The question is, it's different for every species. How long does it take to get to that plateau? Like with blue catfish, it's completely different. Um, because of the snakehead's life history, because of the fact that they're being heavily exploited by hook and line and both anglers, I think that is helping to drive the fishery down. So we've got, we've got both facets in there, and we've got this thing we talked about before, recruitment. We've got highly variable recruitment. We know that some years we have a bunch of young snakeheads, and other years we hardly have any. And we don't know, that's the, for us, that's the biggest unanswered question, is why some years are we having these huge year classes and not you know, poor year classes other years. But suffice it to say that, that, that all these factors working together and it's not just one creek, it's multiple creeks. We've seen the same trend. It, it, and it's a line going up, it's stabilizing, and it's starting to curl down. And we're getting complaints now. Fishermen like you are calling us up, and they're saying, hey, where, the where in the hell are the snakeheads? You guys need to put a yeah. limit. So here yeah. we've come 180 degrees in less than five years, maybe, a few more, yeah. where people were worried and they're saying, oh, my God, you got to kill every one you get. Yeah. And now people are saying, you got to conserve these fish. These are a valuable resource. Yeah. So this is a conundrum. 
for the state resource agencies. So you're in a rock and a hard place. We, we are. <laughs> we we are. are yeah. So we have to be very uh, careful. We don't want to be uh, uh, a proponent for, quote, invasive fish, which yeah. I don't even, I have gotten to the point where a long time ago, and this is one of my pet peeves, I don't call the snakeheads invasive because there's not one piece of published literature that suggests that they will cause ecological damage. Yeah. There's not one piece of published literature that suggests that they will cause ecological damage. Yeah. And to me, that's, to me, is to be a good colonist invasive? I would say no. Yeah. To be, as long as there's no ecological or economical damage, I would say that fish is not invasive. That brings, that brings me to my next point. What, what impact? I mean, so, none. I mean, they, they, zero. Zero. Yeah. Zero yeah, impact short, right short now. answer to that question. Z zero. And, and because the Potomac River is a fish factory, okay, yeah. that helps a lot. We have an extraordinarily fertile system, dynamic, uh, biomass off the charts. Yeah. There's, so when we talked about relative abundance a little while ago, and we're talking about largemouth bass, okay? Similar, the exact same trophic level. They're occupying the same niche. Yeah. You've got, for largemouth bass, anywhere between 50 and 70 fish per hour, relative abundance. So you throw in, another, what's another 10? Snakeheads are 10 in most of these creeks. Maybe 20 in Aquinas, some of the southern creeks. What, is that, what difference does that make? Hmm. What different at that level now? Okay, so if snakeheads kept going and you got a hundred an hour, yeah. okay, that might be a problem. But at where we are now, if it doesn't go any higher, I would argue in this system, it's irrelevant, completely irrelevant. As in, so you're saying they have, they have, what your study in this only Virginia tributaries, right, has shown almost zero.